What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, over the weekend, there was a, a strange discovery that was made with Nintendo that actually went viral online. And it's not really strange in the, the sense of what was discovered, but more so the fact that it's actually been out there for a while for Mario Kart, as well as other Switch titles. We'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about THQ Nordic and their showcase on Friday. They had some pretty fun reveals in there, as well as one big surprise to close things out. And we're also gonna be talking about the next big game that's currently being teased from Hideo Kojima. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps that a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Avatar, but not Avatar that Ubisoft is working on. You know, Avatar The Last Airbender, it looks like a new game could be set for release later on this year. We can see this post up by Nintendo Everything, who spotted this on Amazon Japan. It being titled Avatar The Last Airbender, Quest for Balance. It's currently listed on Amazon Japan with a release of November 8th. However, that could, of course, just be a placeholder date. The thing I do want to point out is it's being published by Game Mill, so that, to me, means uh, keep those expectations in check. Game Mill can kind of be all over the place for the titles that they publish. Sometimes they'll put out Cruise and Blast, or like that Nickelodeon All-Stars game that's kind of like Smash Brothers. Other times, they'll put out things like the G.I. Joe, right? Or uh, that weird Cobra Kai game or uh, Street Outlaws. So all over the place there. We'll see about the quality for this title. But as Nintendo everything points out, it's been a little while. It was like the Wii or DS era that we had the last game in this series. The one that I think most people know about because it's still advertised to this day whenever it goes on sale is the Xbox 360 Avatar uh, The Last Airbender game because you can get like a thousand gamer score it literally in minutes and that's basically the reason people still buy that game overall but hey something to look forward to here I guess they'll set up for it to be revealed at one of these bigger gaming events coming up or who knows maybe they just push out a press release on Twitter also we've been hearing a lot about the potential future for Assassin's Creed we've heard about like a smaller side story game that could come out and then we've also heard about the big live service plans for the series going forward with Assassin's Creed Infinity. And it looks like they could finally be heading to a time period and setting that I've been asking for Ubisoft to attempt here for a while now. We can see this posted up by Tom Henderson, who asked, does anyone know which studio is developing Project Red for Assassin's Creed Infinity? When asked, what is that? He says, a portion of Infinity set in Japan, to my understanding. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard about this. Uh, it's actually kind of corroborating what Jeff Grubb had mentioned, uh, I think over a month ago or so, that yeah, Assassin's Creed Infinity could have part of it take place in Japan. And I, I, while I think they may have waited a little too long to do that, because we had Ghost Tsushima, right? That's kind of what a lot of people say. It's sort of like Assassin's Creed mixed with Tenshu and you know all of those things. I still think it'd be really cool to see what their take would be uh, with like a time period set in Japan. And I think that'd be a good way to kick off what people will be skeptical of, which is a, a big live service platform for the Assassin's Creed series going forward. But we know that's what Ubisoft really wants are just live service games. And I guess one way to get people interested, myself included, is to reveal that the next Assassin's Creed game would be happening in Japan, but I guess we'll see. Oh, and as we're seeing more and more games get delayed out of 2022, there are questions of games that don't have release dates anymore and if they will actually come out this year since, I don't know, we're in August. Well, one of those games is Sonic Frontiers. In fact, Sega was asked by investors about this, and we can see this transcribed by VGC. Um, where the question was actually just about, hey, are you going to delay or postpone the release? Have you considered it so that you can improve it? Following feedback from players in the press, Sega just responded, we do not consider postponing the launch at this point. And that was gonna it. So I, I guess Sonic Frontiers is still coming out this year. They've advertised they're gonna be at Gamescom. It seems like the release date is the big reveal there. We've seen probably more of this game than they they should have shown us then because of the obviously the opinions we have now looking at it and it's it was i think a bad a first impression for it because it has been better the more they've shown it but we kind of need that release date soon we're like halfway through august getting close to september and i assume they're going to try to place it in november or december so i guess look out for gamescom for that one and guys with some of the quick news out of the way let's get into the bigger stuff let's start right away with this uh this discovery around nintendo that went viral online i mean it was getting passed around twitter all over the place i was getting tagged constantly for this 
and we can see it posted up. This is from uh, Mangalore, who says, Mario Kart 8 Del uh, Deluxe has a secret LAN mode. Hold L and R and click in the left stick on the main menu. Wire up to 12 switches for 12 player in-person Mario Kart action. This is something we did. I didn't do it, but it was possible. With like the GameCube, I, I think you could just fill out an entire room with GameCubes all over the place in a, in a single setting. But this, I, like I said, exploded online and people were just like, why are they hiding the, the, like the LAN connection, which... At that time, when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out, you have to remember you had to like run USB, to, you had to maybe buy a third party adapter. Nintendo had like an official one with Hori and stuff, but they weren't exactly like, I feel like Nintendo anyway wasn't exactly pushing the idea of LAN play necessarily, but I will admit they have shown this many times. They even did like an entire Nintendo Minute I think weeks after Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out, going over this, like actually instructing you how to set this up. And then if, even if you look on their Nintendo support page, it, they have right here how to use the LAN play feature of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It just kind of seems like uh, people glossed over it. Although you feel like Nintendo could make it easier to find this. The fact you have to do a button combination, I mean, it is kind of reminiscent of what we just went through with Super Punch-Out. It's just that one took, you know, like, 28 years to discover it, not necessarily almost six years for something like this to get passed around. And I guess while we're at it, uh, you can do LAN play for other games that kind of use button combinations as well. Again, these are all over on the customer support pages from Nintendo, like Splatoon 2. That has LAN play feature. Uh, that one has kind of like a, a little button combination there that's outlined on the page. You also have Super Mario Maker 2. Yeah, that's right. It has LAN play. And even ARMS has LAN play. There might be even a few others in there. So let me know if that is the case down below in the comments. I'm I'm a little curious why this was something that people didn't notice then, but now it's really being passed around. The only thing I can think of is the Switch OLED just comes with a LAN connection now. Like you can plug in an Ethernet cable and just run like a bunch of different switches together that way. And People weren't necessarily going out and buying the, like a USB to LAN connector in force back in the day. It was something that I did videos reviewing them and seeing what the speeds were like, but it wasn't necessarily something that came in the box or people would think otherwise about. They would just use it wirelessly and that was kind of it. So that's the only thing I can think of currently, but yeah, check out Nintendo's support page because there might be some multiplayer games you're playing on the Switch now that actually support LAN play. And yeah, technically you could have an entire LAN party with a bunch of people in one room playing Mario Kart or even Super Mario Maker 2. Next up, let's talk about that THQ Nordic showcase. This took place on Friday. There were some pretty cool announcements in there. And at the end, they did this weird thing where it seemed like they were closing out the presentation completely. And then they kind of showed back up on screen, scribbled out the number of games they had, removing one, and then did a bit of a reveal. But let's start from the top here. And that's with Alone in the Dark Remake. This leaked out a bit early. We, we did like the snitch talked about this on Twitter through kind of like this cryptic tweet, quickly tied that back to the Alone in the Dark movie. And here we are now with Alone in the Dark remake. It's kind of like a reimagining of the first one, classic survival horror gameplay, and it's coming out on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC. No release date or anything there, so it's it's gonna be a little while on that one. Then we had Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobe, which looks really good. If you have not played the Destroy All Humans remake, that's out now, I completely recommend it. It's still a blast to play in. They did a really good job trying to be as close as they could to the original while bringing it up to like current systems. Uh, the second one though is coming out August 30th. We already knew about it. It was just kind of a new trailer. Then we had Space for Sale, which is uh, like, a, like a building simulation game. It lets you kind of go through space. You build houses and, and, and different things. They had a lot of PC games thrown in here, but that one is coming to PC. Gothic 1 is getting a remake. THQ Nordic really like really diving into the intellectual properties, that library that they have, which is it's pretty large. That's coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC. 
Jagged Alliance 3. It's a tactical PC game. I, I'll admit I'm not familiar with the Jagged Alliance series, but there were some people who were really excited to see this one pop up. Then we had The Valiant. That's another real-time strategy game coming to PC. Tempest Rising. It's a base-building RTS. That one's coming to PC in 2023. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. It's a strategy game that's in development. Coming to PC at some point. Outcast 2. Some people really told me, hey, you're going to want to keep an eye on this Outcast 2 game. I, I thought about looking more into the original one. Apparently, that came out in like the late 90s. Again, not familiar with this series. But this one is coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC. We had Recreation. This game is one of the standouts, for me anyway. I, I think it looks really cool. It's coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, and and PC. It's like this open world arcade racing game. And the biggest thing here is one, the world itself appears to be massive, but then they're also creating all kinds of tracks almost in real time. And you can have your friends join in as you're building stuff. And it looks like a blast. Looks very much like it's really off the wall. Hey, go do whatever you want and race around with your friends. Then we had Way of the Hunter that's coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC on August 16th. AEW Wrestling, Fight Forever. We talked previously about how this was going to be at the showcase, and there was this trailer that was leaked out early, like last week, so kind of already had a look at it, but this is, of course, coming to all platforms, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Unfortunately, no release date yet for this one. To my understanding, they're trying to get this out this year, but we're kind of running out of time, so this might be one that shows up uh, maybe in the first half next year. I thought it looked pretty fun. It looks more arcadey than 2K22, which was obviously trying to be more uh, simulation-based. This is done by the, the same producer and mostly the same team that did, like, No Mercy or, like, those older N64 wrestling games. So, I am certainly interested in this, and if it comes out and it runs well enough on the Switch, well, I mean, what else do you have? Uh, 2K18? Yeah, I think I would recommend AEW Fight Forever over that if it can run at, I don't know, 20 or 30 frames. Then we had Stunt Fest World Tour. It's coming to PC, they just say soon. SpongeBob SquarePants. The Cosmic Shake. This, uh, we had the SpongeBob SquarePants remake that they did before, and then they went into just doing an entirely new one. So this, I mean, it's fun stuff that THQ is really doing a lot of variety here. So there you go, uh, fans of the SpongeBob SquarePants games. This looks, uh, looks higher quality, so good stuff there. And then they closed out with just kind of a nod towards there being some sort of game in development for South Park. Uh, no other indication as to what this is because we've had like the South Park RPGs that Ubisoft did. I guess THQ Nordic went out and got licensing to make a South Park game. So I'm cu I'm curious what this is going to be. Is this going to be similar to like the first person shooter South Park that we had on the Nintendo 64? That could be kind of fun. Uh, that's the thing. It's, it's hard to say right now. I mean, who would have thought we would have... Actually, pretty good RPGs for South Park with Ubisoft. This could be anything, so certainly going to keep my, my eye on this one. But for the most part, there were a lot of different games here. Yeah, there were a lot of, like, real-time strategy PC titles, but also some pretty good variety with uh, AEW Wrestling and uh, Recreation, which is one that I'll certainly keep my eye on, and Alone in the Dark remake. I would say... A pretty good showing overall for THQ here. Next up, let's talk about Hideo Kojima and Kojima Productions' next big game. We can see this posted up over on Twitter from Hideo Kojima, saying tentatively finished editing for now. We can see what looks like a bunch of video layers in Adobe Premiere, and then his two monitors that are just off, and it, it does look like there's quite a bit going on in the timeline then, if he's up to, what is that, like 11 uh, lines of video. You see all the audio there. It looks like he's cutting up some sort of trailer, maybe? I, I mean, that's if there's like an event coming up that Kojima would be attending to show off. Maybe this Overdose game for Xbox. Hmm, what could be coming up? I don't know. Maybe Gamescom with Jeff Keighley? That's sort of what a lot of people are assuming here. Since, 
I mean, I mean, Kojima's shown up to Opening Night Live a couple of times. He showed off uh, Death Stranding with gameplay there. He showed off Death Stranding with Jeff Keighley in the game, and he just wanted to make sure everyone knew he was in the game for that one. But I think it's possible we could see Kojima maybe show up to Gamescom with the reveal for Overdose, which is apparently the Xbox game that he's working on. Remember, this had gotten out there from Tom Henderson a little while ago, and Kojima Productions even reached out to pull down the article as it went into specifics around some sort of trailer, so maybe like this one, that was being described back to them as to what the setting and kind of the premise was. But the thing I will say about Kojima is he'll show us trailers that either place us at like weird points in time in the game and we can't necessarily wrap our head around what's going on. Remember with Death Stranding, the first thing we saw was uh, Del Toro running around with a baby in a jar. We had no idea what, what was going on. So no matter what he shows us here, say for the first time with Overdose, I don't know if we're gonna get a lot of information out of it. We'll come out of it with way more questions than answers. Also, I do wanna point out that it's possible that maybe this could be another game that's in development with Kojima Productions for Sony. I kinda of think that Hideo Kojima is essentially developing a game for Xbox and for Sony right now, which, hey, good for them. I mean, they're an independent studio. They might as well make as much money as they can developing games. And I do think it's a studio that can handle two games at the same time. So maybe maybe it's Death Stranding 2. Maybe it's a whole nother intellectual property that they've created. And I'm always curious what Kojima comes up with, whether it's him working for a cloud game with Microsoft and Azure, or just a, a brand new world from the mind of Kojima with a big single player narrative driven experience. Uh, interesting stuff. We'll keep an eye on Gamescom though. It could be a pretty cool reveal. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about another big game delay for 2022. This just seems to be the expectation now. Even if a game has a release date, people are like, nah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it happens, right? Well, this time we have a pretty big title being moved into 2023. We can see this posted up over on Twitter. This from Hogwarts Legacy, which will now launch on February 10th, 2023 for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. I do want to point out, they never actually gave it a release date. They just had the release year of 2022. So the fact that we're into August now and we didn't have a release is like, yeah, the writing was kind of on the wall and people were expecting this to get pushed. Uh, but they say the Nintendo Switch launch date will be revealed soon. That makes me think it's coming later than February 10th. Hopefully not too much later. We've seen the the pre-orders up on Amazon, so we figure it's not a cloud version, uh, but we'll see how that one turns out there. The team is excited for you to play, but we need a little more time to deliver the best possible game experience. So uh, they're saying they need a bit more time to develop and polish the game. I also think as people are kind of pointing out online that I mean, this is Sony's marketing game. Like they're marketing the game, right? Like they did a whole state of play for it. Do they want it to necessarily line up next to God of War? Because that's sort of the way it appeared to be trending. Like if they announce the release date for this game and it's like they want a two or three month run up for marketing, like it's gonna be in November then and God of War is right there. So in that, in that case, they're like, hey, you know what? Take a few more months and we'll push it out in 2023 in the first couple of months when, you know, there might not be as many releases around. It's certainly not something like a God of War, although who knows, Elden Ring just showed up at the beginning of this year and basically took the whole gaming world by storm. But that's just sort of how 2022 is shaken out. It's like we had all these games set up for the year and then one by one, they got pushed into 2023. So I see a lot of people eyeing up 2023 as being this big year in gaming, but that's kind of what we were doing with 2022 as we exited 2021. So I'm hoping a lot of those games kind of remain in 2023, but it might just get so crowded that other games just get pushed into 2024 and we sort of do this all over again. But I do kind of think like the gaming, like development cycle, everything that was affected by remote work and COVID kind of getting back on track now. So we could be looking at, I'm hoping, a pretty big year in gaming for 2023. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, do you think Sonic Frontiers is still coming out this year? 63% say no. 37% say yes. I mean, I mean, Sega, they seem to think it's coming out this year. I have to imagine they already have a release window in mind, or even a release date. I wouldn't be shocked if it's December. Do you think they'd bring it out in the first week of December? I mean, 
that would be pushing it. Then we would know they were very close, I think, to just pushing it into 2023. But yeah, they don't seem deterred from a lot of the comments that were being made online and by press and everything. So it's been a very weird marketing cycle for this game. Maybe it really is time to just push it out there. I think the best thing that Sega can do with this game is to let us play it with a demo. Just drop that maybe at Gamescom alongside of a release date and we'll see what happens with Sonic Frontiers. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Aiden saying, my one prediction for Gamescom is Final Fantasy Tactics Remake. That's the only game from that NVIDIA leak that we haven't seen. And apparently we're set for at least one more Team Asano game this year since they said they had multiple games aside from Triangle Strategy set for 2022. I would like to see an HD 2D remake of Final Fantasy Tactics. I think that'd be pretty cool. I don't necessarily believe that Square would push out Tactics now in, in 2022. Their schedule's pretty packed currently, and they have tact or Tactics Ogre Reborn coming up. That and Final Fantasy Tactics are very similar. It's done by the same people. So it would be kind of strange to market and push them alongside of each other. I think 2023 is a good year for Tactics Remake to come out. That NVIDIA leak list, I just assume everything on there is happening almost at this point, right? I mean, 90% because it continues to be correct, which Final Fantasy IX Remake. I wonder if that's set up for after all this Final Fantasy VII Remake stuff is done. What if they made a big push towards IX with the same kind of production value? That would be something to see. But I'm thinking next year for Final Fantasy Tactics Remake from Square Enix. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was the, the whole situation around land play and some of these Switch games like Mario Kart or Super Mario Maker 2. Did you know that was there or did you just realize that after it was getting passed around Twitter? And then also, what about the THQ Nordic showcase on Friday? And then Hideo Kojima appears to be editing something on his PC. Do you believe it's a trailer for one of their new games at Gamescom? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.